What is going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel and happy Friday. My name is Hart, and today I'll be breaking down this 13 game NBA slate. That is right, we have 13 games, absolutely massive slate. After yesterday, it was only two games, so expect a ton of craziness for this slate. But I'm gonna be breaking it down, going through my favorite early look core plays, as well as a game by game breakdown. If you guys want more in depth content, make sure to check out my Patreon link down below, where I just won't go more in depth on the whole slate. I gave my my game theory, the the build I like, all the core plays, value plays, all the good stuff. Keep it up to date. As well as price pick, price pick plays, I put it down in my Patreon as well. Uh, we had a solid day there. I put up a price pick slip. We went three and four on that. Uh, we got hooked on the the last one, and then yesterday we went one and one on the YouTube plays. So it's been really really solid, really really good for price picks lately. So make sure to check out that link down below in my Patreon. Hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the prize picks video and the breakdown. Quick recap of my lineup from last night. Obviously, as we know, both games were blowouts, and Milwaukee got blown at, at home by like 7,000 points. So, I had Ingles, super low owned. He did absolutely nothing. Didn't score a single fancy point until the fourth quarter, and then he got pulled. Jason Tatum, absolutely smashing, extremely low owned on a two-game slate, 40 bomb. Uh, but obviously it did not help at all because that game blew up by 80. He could have gone for like 70, 80 plus fantasy points. Uh, Robert Williams was, was absolutely smashing at low ownership. Uh, lost out on a ton of time and just a ton of usage because there was a 70 point game. Then obviously the second game there, Jokic is out. I stacked it and the Denver guys were god awful. So not much you can do about that. But for this breakdown for tonight, guys, it's going to be a pretty quick one. I did record a, a video this morning. Uh, it's about 24 minutes long, you know, breaking down the whole slate. And unfortunately, it's just stuck on the the processing screen. Like, it won't upload. Not really sure why. Uh, so, I'm recording this. It's going to be a, a very quick breakdown just because, you know, we don't have a ton of time left. And if you guys want a more in-depth breakdown, I'll just have it on my, my Patreon uh, in a little bit. So, make sure to check that out. Link down below. And, yeah, let's get into this uh, quick breakdown. So, for the first game here, Ch Chicago, Charlotte. I like uh, the Chicago guys a good amount. It's a fantastic matchup here. Uh, the, the news is just like, will the Charlotte Hornets play their main guys or will they play their, their bench guys? Obviously, it's the bench guys. There's a, the risk of blowout, but I still really like all three Chicago guys. If I had to land on one or two, it'd be Vooch and Levine. Um, but obviously, DeMar is very, very solid as well. On the Charlotte side, obviously, the big news, as I mentioned, will Oubre, Hayward, and Smith Jr. play? If they do... I like those Chicago guys. It makes them even more viable. But if they don't, then I'd rather get to these cheaper guys like a Theo, like a McGowan, who should be seeing pretty solid minutes, and then maybe taking a shot on Mark Williams. Moving on to Orlando and Washington. On the Orlando side here, we have Paolo at the top. I mean, Orlando's one of those teams where it's just more a bunch of contrarian options. No real need to get to any of these guys. If you just want lower own guys, sure, you can land on them. My favorite would probably be Fultz. Washington side here. Porzingis looks like a great spend up. Um, Denny, he's fine. And then the lowered guys, I'd probably prefer right, right, right over Morris, but they're both in play. OKC, uh, SGA is not out. They haven't listed him out, but he's questionable with an ankle injury. So let's wait and see if he plays. If he's out, obviously Gideon Williams look great. Isaiah Joe becomes way more viable. Wiggins will play a good amount of minutes off the bench. He's decent value. Same thing with Williams. But if he's in, then it's really just SGA for me. Maybe you could take a shot on one of these secondary guys, but don't really think there's a need. Indiana side, the big news there is Turner. If he's in, I do like him a good amount. It's a great matchup here. Him and Buddy would look great. If Turner's out, I think Buddy looks even better. He should assume a ton of usage, but he is pretty score independent still. But he should do a bit, little bit more peripheral stat-wise. Uh, Matherin would look fine. Nemhard would look fine. I would have a good amount of interest in like a guy like Naismith and Norwara. Um, and then one of the bigs, Isaiah Jackson, Jada Smith, should have a solid game, or they both could. I prefer getting to Jackson. So that's the news there. A uh, good amount to like in Indiana, but they are running like eight to nine guys, like 25 to 30 minutes each. So kind of caps upside, but they do, or, or they, they all come in at pretty cheap price tags. Moving on to the Toronto Philadelphia game. Toronto side, I would have interest in Gary Trent Jr. If he does play and he's not on a men's limit coming off the bench here, even though he's pretty score independent, I think it's a solid price tag to take a shot on him if he does play. Uh, but otherwise, another team where you can just get some contrarian low owned options in a pretty tough matchup against Philadelphia. So, I don't mind them. They'll all come in pretty cheap and pretty low owned. So I think my favorite would be Fred Van Fleet. And then the rest of the team just looks solid. Moving on to Philadelphia. I love and beat. I love and harden. I love and beat. I love harden. Bounce back spots here. Uh, Harris is questionable. If he's out, they'll probably just slide McDaniels into the starting lineup at 3,700. He'd be a fair value play, but they'll still split minutes uh, with a guy like um, 
house a little bit. They'll throw in maybe some cork mods, but they'll throw in the Aang. They'll throw in uh, Shake Milton. So not much to like on the, the value side there besides McDaniels if he does slide into the starting lineup for Harris. On to Utah and Boston. Obviously a game with big ball at risk. Um, Kelly Lennon questionable. That's decently big news because if he's out, um, it really just takes any interest away from me on this side. If he was in, I, I like him a little bit, but if he's out, no chance I'm getting to Kessler and Tucker. They're running like a 40-man rotation here for Utah. Everyone's playing like 20 minutes each, or if not more. Um, so yeah, I don't like the two guys at the top. Even though they have huge upside, it's just this game probably won't stay close. And Utah is going to run like a 60-man rotation. So in that rotation, I do like Lucas manage a good amount. He played 25 minutes. They just called him up, and he played 25 minutes, and he was super aggressive. Uh, he can stuff the stat sheet. So I do like him a good amount there at 4,200. Especially this game does blow out. JATA started. He played some decent minutes. I don't mind him. Uh, Azubuki would probably be the, the other cheap guy I'd look to. Um, one of those guys who can definitely get a double-double. So I think right now it would probably be just Luka is the one that's standing out to me there. Obviously, if this game stays close, you know, it's going to be because of probably Horn Tucker, Kessler, maybe some guys off the bench doing well. But on the Boston side, we're getting very cheap price tags for a guy like Jason Tatum. He's probably my favorite, and then followed by Robert Williams. But the risk there is that will this game stay close? If you think it does, you're going to get them at pretty low ownership, and they have huge, huge feelings at the price tags. Uh, but obviously, if this game blows out, you're going to get screwed. So moving on to the, the Cleveland game here. Randall's out. That's the big news. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do with the starting lineup. You know, they could start quickly and go smaller because Cleveland's not that small because Jared Allen is doubtful. So, um, you know, Cle Cleveland could get some, go small there. They can throw in quickly. They can throw in hard. So I guess whoever starts for Randall is probably the most interesting for me. I would hope it'd be Toppin. He'd be a solid value play. And then off the bench, Hartenstein's been playing solid minutes and been doing actually better than Robinson. So you can look to that. But right now at their price tags, not a lot interests me. Brunson and Barrett would be solid GPP plays because they'd be pretty contrarian. Barrett's been got awful recently. So yeah, there's some interest there for me. For the Knicks, it just depends on who starts. On the Cleveland side, um, you know, Mitchell Mobley looked fine. Allen's probably doubtful, looking like it's going to be doubtful. So Mobley should start at the center. Great matchup here. He's just priced up about right, though. So um, if I had Atlanta, I wanted probably be Garland out of like the big three for Cleveland. Levert's fine. Should see anywhere from 25 to like 30 minutes. Not a lot of interest for me. On to Atlanta and Brooklyn. Atlanta side, pretty cheap price tags for Trey Young, DeJounte Murray. Um, I prefer getting to Trey Young. He's com coming off a terrible game there. He said after you guys' parlays in a tweet, so he knows a lot of people are pissed at him for that last game there. But I, I like him in a bounce back spot, even though it's a little bit of a tougher matchup. Uh, the big news is Hunter. If he's in, I like taking a shot on him. If he's out, it just opens up more minutes for the wings, like uh, a little bit of Collins, some Bay, some Griffin. So if Griffin or Bay starts, you can definitely look to them, and then whoever comes off the bench, like let's say it's Griffin, I have a good amount of interest in those wings. Moving on to Brooklyn, I like Dinwiddie. I like Bridges a good amount and a good matchup. Uh, Claxton looks solid, but he's priced up about right. Same thing with Cam Johnson. So only interest for me is kind of the two guys on Brooklyn. Clippers, Kawhi was at shoot around, so it looks like he should be good to go. He looks like a great spend up. Russ looks decent. Um, don't love the price tag, especially with Kawhi back, but he still has upside, as we know. Has triple-double upside, so he could be a contrarian piece. And then I do really like Powell uh, off the bench. First game back, did see 24 minutes. Should hopefully see a little bit more there. Uh, we know he's pretty solid upside, so I do like him a good amount, uh, especially with Kawhi back. Him and Kawhi are probably my favorite. Memphis side, everyone's priced about right. Um, I've had to land on someone, it'd probably be Ja. You know, Jackson Jr. has been playing great. Bain's been fine, but everyone else is kind of priced up too high for me. Lakers, Minnesota, must win game here for the Lakers. I like Anthony Davis. I like LeBron James a good amount. I, I don't mind taking a shot on LeBron as a spend up. You know, his, his minutes are limited, 30 and 31. But if he sees, you know, he could easily get you there in 30 minutes. I will say that. But it, let's say he sees 33, 34. If it's a close game, he could definitely get you like 50, 50 plus fantasy points and be very low owned. So I do like him as a very contrarian option. Minnesota side, really just going to be Towns and Edwards for me. They both should be uh, playing. Towns' minutes are pretty much back to normal. It's all 34 last game. Should see around the same mark today. So like both of those guys. Detroit, Houston, great game environment here. I love targeting this game. Uh, Ivy looks fantastic. He's playing huge minutes. He's shooting the ball a ton. All the usage. Hayes is questionable. It's looking like he might give it a go, um, but we'll have to wait and see. If he's out, obviously, it's just more of a bump for Ivy. And they'd probably start like a like a Umore off the bench would be a fine value play, 4,900. Uh, I have interest in him. Duran looks decent. Same thing with Wiseman. And that's the Detroit side, Houston side uh, for Houston. KPJ looks like he's the best option. 
Uh, and then Martin, if he's out, I do like Tari Eason. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, I really like Tari Eason in this matchup if there's no Martin. Uh, if there's Martin, Tari, I think is still a fine value play. Uh, he's been playing uh, some solid minutes recently, so I do like him. Moving on to San Antonio and Golden State, San Antonio side. It's just hard to get to these guys. I mean, they're priced about right. Not the best matchup for Michigan Golden State. If I had to land on someone, it'd probably be Vassal, but that's really it. Uh, I mean, Zach Collins is out, so they'll probably start Mamu, 5,000. I guess he's a fair play. Don't mind him. So I think those two would probably be my favorites. Um, they did start Champagne last game, and he was god awful. So, yeah, not a lot to like for the Spurs. Golden State, unless they rule out some guys, and then we can get to the cheaper guys. But Golden State side, uh, Steph, Draymond, Green, uh, Clay Thompson, probably the only picks for me. San Sacramento, Portland, obviously huge blowout risk here, but you know, very, very cheap price tag for Fox. So I, I don't know. I might get just super risky and play light tonight and just play Fox and hope this game stays close because uh, he, he's just coming at a super cheap price tag. We know the, the ceiling there is a bonus. They both look great. And you can always take a shot in like one of the wings. Like Monk had a great game last game. Portland side, obviously they're, everyone's out. Uh, so Sharp should lead the team. Don't love his price tag, but he's fine. Playing huge minutes, shooting a ton. A ton. If Water, Watford does play, I do like him a good amount. Obviously, he's out. It opens up more minutes for guys off the bench, like a Jabari Walker, like a John Butler. So we can get to these guys. Um, they're pretty solid value plays. I like Little, and I like Knox the best. If Knox does start, they both should shoot the ball a ton, play good minutes. And then off of the bigs, I'd probably prefer Butler to... I'd probably prefer Walker over Butler, just because Walker should be a little bit more aggressive. So good amount to like there for Portland. And then Denver and Phoenix. Obviously, the big news here is Jokic and Murray. Murray is most likely doubtful. That's what they said. He's probably not going to play. And then Jokic obviously did not play last night. Wouldn't be surprised if they rested him again. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, uh, that's the big news there. So we're going to have to wait for that news and kind of build around it, which sucks. But Jokic would look great if there's no Murray. Just more usage and point guard usage for him. But they'll also probably start uh, Bruce Brown, who would be a very, very solid play there at 4,700. Coming off a very solid game last night. He was the only one that played well. So I'd like him a good amount there if there's no Jamal Murray. And Jokic is back. And then moving on to Phoenix. Uh, KD's fine. He's on a minutes limit. Played around 30 minutes. I'd expect the same tonight. Booker, he's been playing great alongside KD. So I don't mind him. He's a very contrarian play. And then sure, you could take a shot and Nick and Aiton and Paul. But no real need for me. Uh, in terms of like a fourth play here. I think right now I'm just going to land on Philadelphia. But as I said with this, this slate, um, it's huge you're gonna have to watch the minutes uh or the, the news for everyone i think the more balanced approach is probably going to pay off the best just because there's so many different options but you can build start and scrub as balanced a little mix of both so that's kind of it for today guys hope you guys liked the video make sure to check out my price fix video check out my patreon where i have more in-depth uh breakdown of today's slate and i'll see you guys in the next video peace